back to another edition of Max and Nikki 1000 Time Reactions. Where we react to a song after listening to it for our 1000th time. We release three videos a day, every day, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and ding that post notification bell so you don't miss out on all our content. That's right. What are we going to listen to right now, Max? We're going to listen to Touch Me by The Doors. Mm -hmm. We were going back and forth. We were thinking maybe we'll do When You're Strange because it's Halloween coming up. But, oh, shoot, I didn't even think about but, that. But, you know, I, I, we prefer this song more, I guess. So let's just listen to this song. Sure. I mean, not that we don't, not that we dislike a When You're Strange. Sure, yeah. But if I were to be honest with myself, I'd say I prefer this song. Anyway, um, if you're new to the channel, what we do on here is we listen to the song all the way through without stopping so we don't interrupt the intention of the artist. And then after that, we'll talk about a reaction, maybe go into some in-depth analysis of the song, and maybe talk a little bit about the history of the song and the artist, if we should know it. Or artists, if sure. we should know it. Um, also, we'd like to mention that we have another YouTube channel called Max and Nikki, on which we perform oldies, jazz standards, and originals in that vein. Mm -hmm. And we got comedy videos on there as well, if you're interested. Mm -hmm. But for right now, let's take a listen to Touch Me by The Doors. For our 1,000th time. Here we go. Come on, come on, come on, now touch me, babe Can't you see that I am not afraid? What was that promise that you made? Why won't you tell me what she said? What was that promise that you made? Now I'm gonna love you Till the heavens stop the rain. I'm gonna love you till the stars fall from the sky for you and I. Come on, come on, come on, come on, now touch me, babe Can't you see that I am not afraid? What was that promise that you made? Why won't you tell me what she said? What was that promise that you made? I'm gonna love you till the heavens stop the rain I'm gonna love you till the stars fall from the sky for you and I I'm gonna love you till the heavens stop the rain I'm gonna love you till the stars fall from the sky for oh, you and I That's a really good song. What do they say at the end there? I never know. I don't know. I never no. knew what they say out there. Sorry, but it seemed like I was trying to tell Max something. It was that, you know, he keeps trying to look up a little bit of info about the song while we're listening to it. I'm trying to tell him, hey, pay attention. Well, I just want to get ready before I don't want to have to look up while we're talking, you know? 
Well, I know, but it makes you not paying attention to the actual song. No, I'm paying attention. I'm just not facing forward. <laughs> well, that's what they want. They want to see your reaction, Max. Well, anyway, this is a great song. I mean, I really like the 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 string the strings in there. Well, what's cool about the strings is it, it it's kind of a, a you know it's it's got this driving beat going on, and then when the strings come in, it reflects the lyrical content, which is you know I'm gonna love you. Uh, you know, when the heavens, heaven, you talk about as heavenly kind of, and he's kind of singing a little bit more of in a kind of ballad kind of way at that moment, even though the, the pace is still keeping up at that point. I mean, they still have that well, same tempo, but it's it's done in a way to evoke a little bit more of a- It's not as driving. Kind of a swaying kind of feel. And the strings are coming in at that time. It's it's not only reflecting the um, the feeling of the song at the time moment, but also the- the lyrical content, which talk about the heavens and and I'm gonna love you and, and the stars fall from the sky, and then and then it gets right back and then it gets back into the come on driving. come on come on now touch, touch me, me baby, baby. which you know, is touch, kind of touch me is a little bit of a grittier kind of you know something it's that's, more aggressive it's you know there's also you it's, know it's a sexual you know you know innuendo there you know it's also and, kind of more commanding you know right right that too but you know and that's when you hear Robbie Krieger's guitar going on is dun 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 dun, dun you know um oh but, actually it's not that it's well you're thinking that was his guitar no no i'm thinking that that's uh that's the gibson kalamazoo organ playing oh really well it's interesting play by Rand manzarek well it's interesting because i was gonna say i didn't hear too maybe i wasn't hearing it correctly i, I wasn't hearing ray manzarek's um Organ playing. Well, too no, much. that's what I His was typical organ playing that you would hear on "Light My Fire." That's why or "Riders from Riders on the Storm." But it, it I, sa- I, f- I felt like I heard more of his, like the harpsichord. No, I well, heard no harpsichord. there was definitely a harpsichord sound. No, there was actually a celesta, by the way. Um, oh, really? But what it, what I thought I heard was I was like, was that an, is that an organ? It sounds a little bit different. And I and I was correct. That's why I was looking this up. Okay, because so I was, where was the guitar? Playing? I was curious as to what that was. Because it sounded a little bit different than a, a normal organ or electric, an electric organ. It was a Gibson Kalamazoo organ, but which where, had a little bit more of a kind of sting to it, I guess. You well, know? where was the guitar then? A bite to it. Did you hear the guitar that much? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was playing along with the organ. Maybe to give a sort of... Um, maybe it was doubled. Maybe it was a give that kind of unique timbre, I think. Sure. I'm not quite sure. It's also interesting that the drums were all panned all the way to the and left. And the bass was, too. Right. You, you didn't know, you really... notice that on a well, lot of hold these... on. Time out. What? Uh, oh, I guess there was bass guitar on it, huh? Yeah, you know, because in the doors, the doors were known to not have a bass player. That was what was unique about them, that Ray Manzarek would play the bass parts mm-hmm. on his keyboard. Well, yeah, no, there was obviously a bass on this song. You definitely heard it in the left ear. And actually, um, what's you know, you hear that in a lot of older recordings, and now it's become more, homo- you, you, you rarely, if ever, hear a bass in the center anymore. I mean, sorry, uh, in the panned on the left or the right. You always hear it in the center. Yeah, you rarely hear drums on the left or the right. Now. Yeah, no, it, I, because, you know, people want to give the sense of this being kind of sort of a fuller. And, and the, the rhythm, they, you know, the rhythm section, the drums and the bass, they always want that to kind of anchor the song. So people put it in the middle. But people, you know, rarely dare to put these things on the left or the right anymore. And why not? You know, I know somebody who does well, it. Is Ma- know, Mac DeMarco well, does it's, that. It's you know? um, how it has to do with keeping up with the Joneses, as they say. I mean, it, it just, you know, they, they want to have a current sound. And, you know, I was tempted, you know, on these songs that we've been working on for the past couple of years. Um, there's the song that I, uh, that I recently finished mixing that I was recommended by my sister's husband to put the drums all the way to the left and oh really I he, tried he recommended that? that he did he's like you know it'll give it more of a 60s sound but i thought and i played around with that but ultimately it wasn't creating a full sound effect that i wanted and that's why i put it back in well the also what i think is uh i mean to talk about our own music a little bit Yes, while it, it does have a lot of influence from 60s and 70s stuff, I will say Eight. what makes it more current is the production, actually. You know, it's not, we're not necessarily trying to create a, 
you know, uh, simulacrum or something like that. Sure. We're trying to, uh, we're trying to create something that has a modern edge to it, but still is influenced by so it, in essence, old stuff. Be postmodern rather than be Ooh. an exact replica. Yeah, I guess sure. Although one could argue that stuff that is, you know, trying to create that was the whole point. That is what postmodern is is creating a or simulacrum i guess and it's it's sometimes people you know there's a lot of different ideas about what anyway it is. we're and going it, way off topic. you know yeah, yeah it's true yeah. um i do want to say that you were saying that the strings come in on the slope or b- more ballady parts and that's true but at the end when the sax solo is happening oh then you th- hear the strings start building up this build like them not well, well, not let me let me let me finish let me finish okay um what i was going to say is you start hearing the strings build up in sort of a almost a cacophonous way that similar to a day in the life, the, mm-hmm. the buildup of a day in the life right before the, the bridge section that Paul sings in the day of, in the life, you hear that or at the way end of the song in too. The life. What? A day in the life. Yeah, that's what I said. And, um, but in this, you hear it kind of building up, you know, chromatically up, up and up, um, along with the sax solo sort of, you know, really, you know, going at it you know sure i mean uh and that sax solo is pretty cool too Written by a, or played by a guy named curtis amy and i don't know who that wow, is. wow it says there's a tack ta- tenor oh no that's just the solo well there's definitely oh orchestral arrangements right yeah. so you there's know, definitely other so instruments not, here you know obviously there's some horns being played there's other horns and i i mean i definitely heard a baritone sax in there which is you know has this gritty kind of you know, I said, well, well, there were some brass instruments too, you know. Well, no doubt, no doubt about it. Um, and those were cool. Um, anyway, it's a really cool song. Um, uh, I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, we, I, that's what, we I heard it a lot growing up on, you know, on the radio, especially, you know, when we were in high school, you know, delivery driving for a rest, this Italian restaurant, I would hear this a lot on the oldie stations. Sure. Um, but it's really a different experience listening with headphones on, you know? Sure. Anyway, I think that'll do it for our reaction video to this song. To this song. If you like what you heard and saw today, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ding that post notification bell to find out about more Max and Nikki reaction videos. Please keep tuning in.